Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. Why do I look and sound a little bit different? Because I'm shooting this with the GoPro Hero 2 Action Cam, not my regular Canon HF G10. So you've probably seen the lab like you've never seen it before. This thing's got a massive 170 degree wide angle lens on the thing. It's huge. So I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at what makes this thing tick inside. No, it's not the new uh, Hero 3 model, it's the older Hero 2, but should still be interesting. Let's go. Woohoo! Check it out. Love it. Huge wide angle on this sucker. And it can also do non-wide angle as well. I've set it to 127 degree medium view angle, so this is exactly the same shot as before. Here you go, so this is 127 degrees and exactly the same shot again with the 90 degree narrow field of view so it should be a hell of a lot different to the wide angle 170 degree we had at the start and just as another interesting uh, comparison I've turned my main LED lights off here up above me which you've seen in a previous video and still on 90 degree narrow angle and I just checked out uh, the previous footage of this and there was quite a bit of noise on there with the main light on I you know a uh, picture noise uh, from the sensor so there should be even more noise in the background now yes I know you want to see the tear down but I can't help myself doing a bit more comparison this is back to uh, the 170 degree wide angle i.e. the normal mode for the GoPro and once again with my main LED light off so it's relatively dark here in the uh, corner without it I think you've seen previous video with the uh, light measurements it's only a couple hundred lux or something like that so there should be less noise than the narrow angle it seems that the narrow angle mode on this thing um, it drastically uh, increases the picture noise I think I just realized why there's more noise on the narrow angle version it's because it's probably gaining up a lot more because you can only see this much so there's no bright stuff in this scene it's all dark so it gains it right up and uh, causes that greater noise but the wide angle you can see all the bright stuff down that end down there and that uh, keeps the gain lower and hence lower noise that's the theory anyway let's get to the tear down now I do love these GoPro heroes it's just something wonderful about a, a product designed just optimized for a specific purpose and nothing more and these are action cams the thing is small and light there's no LCD on the back or anything like that it's got an expansion uh, header of course and um, it you know it's just designed to do the job it's got a low power um, front panel status LCD there's only two buttons very minimalist interface but it's actually very easy to use it's got a huge um, status lead on the front and also a status lead on the top and um, on the back as well so no matter no matter what angle you view this th thing from you're gonna see the status LED and it can be you know the firmware is quite smart it can be set to uh, power up and automatically start recording as soon as you switch the power on ah oh, just really neat SD card slot um, HDMI um, output cable um, external uh, audio external mic USB interface and uh, and a uh, video and audio out it's just really really nice beautifully designed anyway this is not a review this is a teardown there's a million reviews out there this thing is the ducks guts now let's take the battery out well it's the ducks gut, guts of uh, action cams so um, looks like we can get through four screws in there and check out inside I don't expect it to be hugely you know groundbreaking there'll be a board or two with you know there'll be some flash memory there'll be a main uh, processor and there'll be a couple of other support stuff and things like that it won't be terribly exciting but anyway you never know let's go and that's the thing there's really you know not a lot of hardware that goes into uh, doing something like this it's all uh, I mean you know there's going to be a lot of technology put into uh, the, you know choosing the right sensor and the right lens and stuff like that but as far as actual hardware goes I mean it's not uh, rocket science to do a 
little camera like this and uh, you know take the output from a sensor and drive an LCD and say the uh, you know do the uh, H.264 compression these days and put it onto an SD card. I mean, you know, that was rocket science 10 years ago, but uh, these days it's uh, pretty easy to do all that stuff. So I've got the um, got the screws out. Oh, yeah, heard something crack. There we go, something's, gonna, something's got to give. Well, it looks like we have to get this sticker off, perhaps. That seems to be holding it down so let's yeah let's peel that off ta-da gonski all right now it should well pop open we've got a cable you can feel a cable ta-da there it is oh look at that we've got a uh, what looks like a uh, heat sink here i can't see another reason for that aluminium plate there but uh, yeah we've got some quite uh, high density surface mount stuff in there so let's see if we can get further it looks like there's well there's one main board standard 1.6 millimeter thickness in there you can see it so it looks like what we've got in here is a uh, secondary board down there for the expansion header we've got some flat flex going over to a flat flex connector so we'll whip that off we've got the microphone uh, insert up there they've got that going over on wires I'm not sure why they decided to uh, do that rather than say integrate it um, onto the PCB here and just have it directly stick through the holes in the top of the case I'm not sure why they've made that decision there was some reason for that obviously and uh, looks like we've got another flat flex going over here possibly to the um, uh, well, either to the LCD or uh, and all the sensor. So no, there's another flat flex. Yeah, there seems to be uh, quite a few. So there might be another board under this one as well. But it's quite uh, densely packaged in there. I rather uh, rather like it. I don't think they've uh, wasted anything in terms of um, space. I mean, they could have um, slimmed it down a bit, which is what they've done in the Hero Three, I believe, which is uh, smaller and lighter again than this one so um yeah they've you know this one is uh they you know they got it to market they did exactly what they wanted but they yeah they could have uh, trimmed it down and possibly made it a bit smaller perhaps we'll just lever that up there to get our flat flex cable out it should just pull out now nice done there's our usb connector down there yeah definitely a, a second board down there of course looks like we've got possibly more metal work under here yep there we go so fair bit of metal work in this thing so all that metal work in there would be for uh, heat sinking of the uh, sensor and the processor I'm assuming because they're uh, fairly grunty little things in terms of uh, you know uh, through you know data throughput and uh, stuff like that so um, they are going to be dissipating a little bit of power especially in a small case like this and especially in one that's uh, designed to be uh, sealed up where the basically the heat uh, cannot escape so um, in terms of uh, you know you want extra thermal mass in there uh, because you know the heat's not going to get out through the uh, clear uh, polycarbonate um, you know underwater housing and stuff like that so you want this thing to still operate for a couple of hours uh, while not overheating so they're going to add um, a whole bunch of thermal mass in there with those aluminium heat sinks and there you go I took that plate off and uh, that is the back of the sensor down in there and you can see the matching uh, plate here has a has that uh, has that uh, indentation which uh, presses against the back of the sensor in there so it's dissipating the heat uh, back out of there into this back plate but of course this uh, big chunk of aluminium down in here is also going to be uh, serving as a huge heat sink but they went well that's not enough we need to get some out the back as well and um, uh, you know possibly also uh, spread that into the battery which this uh, plate is against as well so here's the main board and it is absolutely uh, flooded with that uh, little 0402 uh, passives there's a 
bunch of resistor networks in there. There we go, you can see the resistor networks, RN7 and so forth. And uh, we've got a whole bunch of uh, bypass caps. There's gonna be all circuitry on the other side of the board, but there's a whole bunch of passives on there. We've got a couple of other uh, support chips. And around here, we're gonna have our uh, lithium ion uh, battery charger and uh, regulation as well around the power supply and uh, looks like there's a little there's some sort of uh, header on the edge of the board here possibly a uh, you know a, um, a system uh, test header or a uh, programming header or something like that for production and I'm not sure what that 10 pin part is or uh, what it's doing but there's a couple of um, SOT 23s around that as support. There's another five, uh, sorry, a um, six pin uh, SOT 23 down here. Yeah, a few other, uh, we've got a diode there. Not much else exciting happening here. We've got an unpopulated uh, header over here, J6. I'm not sure what that one's uh, doing at all. Once again, maybe some sort of development uh, header or uh, programming. Um, some sort of, you know, a system test uh, header connector or something like that. But that one over there is more likely to be some sort of uh, system test connector than this one down here. I'd say that's probably uh, development or something like that left over. But there you go, there's the back of the sensor and uh, see a bit of goop down in there. They've, you'll notice these metal tabs here, they've hand soldered those on the top of the board so it joins the top and the bottom board down in there. So I hope we can get this board out without having to uh, desolder those because that would be a bit horrible. But um, yeah, it's not, not looking that good. And I've taken a few screws out around here and it looks like the whole thing might pop out as an assembly. Yep, look at that. Ta-da! Beautiful. There's our, oh, there's our LCD. It's hanging in there. Fantastic. So there you go. There's the front side of the unit. You can see the main uh, LED there. See one of the tactile switches. The other tactile switch is uh, on the board up there. So it looks like we've got three board construction in this thing. And it really is uh, quite a complicated little assembly. The flat flex there is just sort of pushed down into there. I can see a whole bunch of inductors along there, check those out. They're quite uh, large for a, uh, something like this. And we've got another couple more down here as well. And our LCD, fully uh, custom of course. Doesn't cost you much to get a fully custom um, LCD. So that's a custom uh, COG chip on glass one there. You can see the chip in there. It's embedded on the glass like that, has the driver that's the uh, driver for the LCD, and it looks like it's just a uh, serial interface there. There's some power and a couple of other lines, so that'll be like an SPI interface um, LCD or something like that. That goes over to the uh, flat flex connector over there. There's a rubber, spongy rubber backing on that, just holding it in place. And there's a bit of bulk uh, capacitance in there with all those tantalums, and the lens uh, pokes out through this board, and that's fixed. I can't not going to put much pressure on that, but I can't really budge that. That's all integrated into the large metal uh, sensor heatsink at the back there. And of course, that's um, you know all of the performance and uh, of this thing is of course due to the uh, sensor and the uh, glass lens in there. It is glass, I believe. It's not uh, polycarbonate, so uh, they're specifically chosen that. That's why this thing gets um, awesome video quality. So they have joined these boards together. Look at this really rather annoying straps. And it looks like those uh, straps are transferring uh, power because one's labeled BAT and then there's a huge thick trace coming out of there from these uh, SOT 23s and that looks like maybe a ground um, tab over there. So it looks like that's how they're getting power through to the other boards. And you can see the uh, battery in there. I believe it's a battery. I don't think it's a uh, super cap. I think it is actually a uh, battery sold onto the main board for the uh, real-time clock. So it's interesting to see how this heatsink actually goes right through the entire thing and even 
right out to the SD card, like it's it's got the cutout in there for the SD card. So they're really packing all of the three-dimensional space in here as much as they can with heat sinking. But that's not terribly surprising, as I said before, they, because the heat uh, cannot escape this thing when it's uh, enclosed in uh, one of those, um, you know, enclosed in, in the polycarbonate case. So really, they have to uh, put all that heat sink in there to uh, absorb it all and uh, hopefully not get hot enough during the uh, full operational time of this thing, which would be one battery charge. So they probably did a lot of uh, uh, thermal testing on this thing to ensure that it uh, it did actually continue to perform and didn't um, overheat in the uh, sealed case over time. There might even be some uh, temp sensor, you know, an over temp uh, sensor in there, perhaps, although I've never heard of a report of a GoPro um, overheating or anything like that, but they certainly uh, may have, I don't know. Um, but yeah, if you can bet your bottom dollar a fair bit of engineering would have went into the, the uh, thermal performance of this thing. Well, yeah, I decided to Google that, and yes, you do find reports of uh, these Hero 2s um, overheating. So there you go. That's why when you stick them in a case and the heat can't escape, that equals bad news for electronics. And I desoldered a bunch of those um, board to board interconnects there, and we can swing this board out like that. I haven't uh, tried to take the lens off yet, but you can see on the bottom of that board they've got some. Uh, mylar or capped on uh, tape there just um, insulating uh, all those parts in there and, uh, and that power supply stuff we saw before so there doesn't seem to be much doing on there at all in terms of uh, main circuitry so but we can get down onto this second board down here and of course it's uh, dominated by the SD card but if you swing this board around you can Zoom in there, you can see a couple of unpopulated uh, footprints up on that uh, top board there and there. So I'm not sure what's uh, going on there. They've obviously left out a few parts after they've designed it. Your guess is as good as mine. And uh, this doesn't look to be easy to get apart at all. It looks like uh, you really do have to get that lens off to pop this board off and then separate these two. I mean, I am able to wiggle that. I'm not sure if you can see right down in there, but maybe not. But um, you can see the main chip in there, and there's a dob of uh, heatsink compound on top of it, which uh, thermally bonds that through to the main aluminium block going right through there like that. So the main processor is under there somewhere. But can I get to it? Oh, I don't know. So there you go. You can actually see the dob of excuse the overexposure on the external parts i'm trying to get a look under but you can see that big dollop of uh heat sink compound there's another chip down in there as well the second one right there you can see the uh, heat sink compound on that one as well so there's two main two main chips down in there that are heat sunk and there we have it folks i very bravely uh removed the uh, lens there and uh, I don't I do want this thing to be operational afterwards so I don't really want to uh, uh, try you know I don't want to get uh, dust and other crap in here but there's the bare sensor mounted on the board there so the lens goes directly over that and we have a GoPro branded device there and another one which we'll try and take a look at and you can see the lens assembly down the bottom there like that. And there's the GoPro sensor up close. It's sort of like an LCC package, sort of uh, directly reflow soldered onto that board there. And lots of exposed uh, gold as well. That heat, that's all uh, grounded and that uh, helps the uh, heat sinking performance as well. So we have a GoPro branded device. I'm not sure I'd have to uh, clean off all the gunk there, all the hissing compound to see exactly what that is. And they've got two uh, watch can crystals there, which is really uh, interesting, sort of hand soldered 
and folded back down there. I don't know why they've gone for that instead of a uh, surface mount option. I don't know what's going on there at all. And we've probably got some more uh, power supply stuff up there, probably for the internal uh, core voltages and things like that. So that is pretty much the guts of the GoPro right there. And I may have found the temperature sensor there. It uh, almost looks like a dead giveaway, two litre device, bit of uh, mylar or some other tape, and it's wedged under the heatsink there. Dead giveaway. And I love the look of the lens. That's really quite nice, and it just drops into that uh, part of the machined out aluminium block. Lovely. And here you can see the uh, surface mount speaker. You can see the port on the right hand side there. That uh, goes through a hole in the, side, in the bottom of the case. And it wasn't hard to find out that that GoPro branded uh, chip in there, look they've even got this logo on there, Be A Hero, is um, from a company called uh, Amberella and it's the uh, A5S uh, system on chip uh, processor and it's the HR264 um, you know, encoder and the whole uh, works. It's basically a uh, complete solution. Um, and we've got the memory uh, next to it over there. And um, yeah, really, uh, GoPro have, you know, whacked on the uh, a good uh, lens onto this thing, the novel, um, all of the novel packaging and uh, stuff like that, and the firmware, and uh, it's good to go. No pun intended. And here we go. Let's take a look at the data sheet for this Amberella A5. S. It's a hybrid DV camera system on chip, or SOC. It's a single chip uh, H.264 codex solution for high-definition hybrid DV cameras, leveraging Amberella's leadership in professional encoding and low-power DSP technology. The A5S provides a unique combination of high-quality digital still image processing combined with full HD video processing. Woo! There you go. Um, no compromise, blah, 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 blah. And here's the inner stuff we're interested in. A5S H.264 codec integrates an image sensor pipeline capable of processing 240 megapixels per second, uh, 1080p 30 frames per second, HD264 video codec, and a 528 megahertz ARM 11 processor. Um, and yeah, you can get a full hardware reference design, software developers kit, and all that sort of stuff with it. So there you go. Um, here's all the uh, specs, high ISO and blah, 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 blah. 3D noise reduction as well, motion compensated stuff, and um, advanced rolling shutter compensation. As you can see, it's got pretty much everything. I mean, it does a simultaneous LCD and HDMI output. If you had the LCD backpack, it could do both at once. On-screen display, readout, touchscreen support. If you had a touchscreen on this thing, it also supports uh, on-chip editing and wireless um, as well. But for this uh, Hero 2, you had to get the wireless backpack um, separately. But the new um, uh, Hero 3 uh, has the wireless uh, built in. Ultra ultra compact bomb bill of materials. It's all important, um, as you see. But there was a lot of uh, support passive uh, components, of course. But in terms of external chips, you saw it. It was just this main one system on chip, the A5S, and two memory chips, and uh, that was basically it. And uh, it claims less than 500 milliwatts, um, including the DDR memory as well. So that's pretty impressive. And here's the uh, block diagram for the thing. And as you can see, it's. Uh, it's got pretty much everything um, embedded into there. It's got, uh, lens, you know, it's got the uh, direct um, sensor input from the lens, of course. It's got regular GPIOs. It does um, I2S uh, audio codec, DDR memory interface, NAN, flash memory interface. It's got a couple of UARTs if you want to use those. It's maybe for uh, debugging during um, system uh, testing or, you know, or development or uh, something like that. It's got a USB uh, host interface, of course, the JTAG, of course, that's how you program and uh, uh, test the thing. And um, it's got a wireless output SD card all built in, LCD, HDMI, blah, blah, blah. It's got the real-time clock built in and uh, the image DSP sensor pipeline and scaling and then the H.264 um, encoding as well with dual stream uh, rate control. Fantastic. There's a lot of functionality um uh, built into this thing it's you know it's absolutely massive so um yeah if you want more details um check out the well i presume well you probably can't get the data sheet actually you've probably you know got to sign an nda or something like that to get the data sheet and there you go it's the package is a 404 pin 
BGA, 15 by 15 millimeters, uh, designed to operate to uh, 70 degrees, and it is uh, manufactured using the 45 nanometer process. And you can clearly see the uh, heat sink going right through this thing. So they've really um, done an impressive uh, systems engineering job and 3D envelope packaging for this thing. I really like it. Um, they've done a really great job. So there you go, as uh, expected, there's not, you know, a huge amount um, in this thing. I mean, you know, there's the main uh, processor with some memory and that pretty much um, handles everything. But, you know, it was really quite nice in terms of uh, construction, how they've used these uh, tabs to go to get the uh, power between boards and how they've jammed it all in there and how they're able to get the uh, thermal performance inside this thing. So it really is quite uh, clever and it's, um, its performance is really uh, quite phenomenal. And of course, this thing is uh, super rugged as well in terms of the uh, packaging. It's, you know, it's built, built like the proverbial brick dunny when it's uh, fully assembled and packaged because this thing has like survived, you know, um, free fall drops from aeroplanes and stuff like that. It's, uh, it's quite famous for uh, being a very survivable device. So there you go. I hope you uh, enjoyed that teardown of the GoPro Hero 2. I thought it was rather interesting. So if you want to discuss it, uh, jump on over to the EEV blog forum. And don't forget, if you like Teardown Tuesday, please give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time. Damn, now I've got to put this bloody thing back together. This thing has to go on the canyon copter. Oh.